find out what, if any, impact that's having on the bond market. Simon Michelle from Fig Securities is joining us. Simon, good to see you there today. Now, I just want to ask you about the construction data because we seem to be at an important crossroad here, although expecting some of that, you know, housing construction to, to start declining. Um, what did you make of that today? Because it's certainly an important building block for, for GDP growth next week. It is indeed, and good afternoon, Leanne. And uh, look, it, it really continues a bit of a downward trend. Uh, the building construction uh, came in at negative 0.7% for the first quarter of this year. If you look at the last quarter of 2016, we actually had a positive number, uh, an increase of 0.6%. But over the year to this quarter, it's actually down 7%. So it really continues that negative trend we've seen really in uh, private residential dwelling construction uh, over the last uh, 12 months. If you actually go back to um, third quarter 2015, it was about 52 billion. We're now down to about 46 billion a quarter. So quite a significant downward trend. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll come back to those Aussie yields in just a moment, but just firstly looking overseas, I mean, we've seen some anemic economic growth uh, and, and data in the US, political uncertainty, of course, after Trump's budget proposal. Have we seen a rush to those safe haven bonds? Look, I think people are just sitting on the sidelines at the moment. We also have later this week coming out, Leanne, the uh, Fed uh, minutes of their May meeting. Mm. Now, since we've uh, had um, the Fed come out and have that FOMC meeting, we've had a bit of conflicting messaging. We've certainly had uh, some um, uh, deputy governors pointing out that uh, low, uh, weak growth, that weak inflation. Um, others sort of saying, look, we've got to look through this, look through uncertainty and, you know, really setting up for June tightening. So it'll be really interesting whether they stick to that message and whether the market that is largely buying into a June tightening uh, continues that thought. Today we've seen Moody's cutting China's credit rating. So we were just saying earlier, really speaking to the, the financial pressures there in, in China. Um, what, have, uh, what did you make? I mean, have we seen much of a reaction in the bond market? Because obviously China's you know, continued to support the market through those regulatory changes. But this news today, what sort of impact has it had? Yeah, look, not as much as you might think, Leanne, and that's largely because uh, Moody's already had them on a, a negative outlook. So, um, you know, it, it's really about the rating agencies. Look, they were on a double A3 rating. Uh, there was a view that there would be uh, possibly some downward movement on that credit rating. They've taken that move down to A1. Um, you know, I think if anyone was surprised by that, they haven't really been sort of keeping a close watch on China. Um, it's really about growing corporate debt levels. We know that the maturing of their debt markets over there likely to lead to some defaults as well. And also the ability for China to continue to maintain that growth forecast about, uh, above 6.5%. They look a little bit more challenged at the moment. All right, fantastic, Simon. We're going to have to leave it there, but it's always great having you on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leanne. Simon Michelle there from Fig Security.